Emergency laws have been enacted to stop the transmission of the invisible disease COVID-19 from human to human contact and interaction. Many of these emergency laws are referred here as the stay at home laws. Emergency stay at home laws aren't easy to understand, especially when the guidance is changing and messaging of those in authority is vague and conflicting. And with reports of overzealous policing in enforcing the stay at home laws, it's not surprising that there's a need to clarify what the stay at home laws say and what they don't say. So for example, can you go for a drive as one of your one per day exercise? Can you go to the shops to buy cigarettes? Can you work as a taxi driver? And what steps should the police be taking before issuing a fine? These are some of the questions this short legal video explainer answers. But remember that laws are changing all the time. So please keep up to date with the latest government announcements as we will endeavor to do on community legal education. So please subscribe and join the channel. The stay at home instructions were issued by the Prime Minister on the 23rd of March 2020, where he stated that is why people will only be allowed to leave their home for the following very limited purposes shopping for basic necessities as infrequent as possible, one form of exercise a day, for example a run, a walk or a cycle alone or with members of your household, any medical need to provide care or to help a vulnerable person and travelling to and from work but only where this is absolutely necessary and cannot be done from home. That's all. These are the only reasons you should leave your home. There are in fact 13 lawful reasonable excuses stated in a regulation to leave your home which is explained later, not just the four mentioned by the Prime Minister. Having said this, the UK's Prime Minister's instructions have now been put into law using the Public Health Act 1984 to issue emergency regulation known here as the Health Protection Coronavirus Restrictions England Regulations 2020. Similar laws have been passed in Scotland, Northern Ireland and Wales. This regulation came into force on the 26th of March 2020 without parliamentary debate lasts up to six months and is reviewed every 21 days. These emergency regulations are wide ranging and places severe restrictions on our liberty, where we can go, what we can do, who we can be with in public and what we can shop for. And they are backed by fines of a maximum of £960. In certain circumstances, you could be arrested and a criminal prosecution could follow for failing to comply with the stay at home laws and those who fail to comply with the exceptions as interpreted by the police. Regulation 6.1 is the specific stay at home rule and states, during the emergency period, no person may leave the place where they are living without reasonable excuse. The place where a person is living includes the premises where you live together with any garden, yard, passage, stair, garage, outhouse or conservatory. The regulation states that you cannot leave your place unless you have a reasonable excuse. There are 13 lawful reasonable excuses listed in regulation 6.2 and these are summarized as follows. 1. To obtain basic necessities. 2. To take exercise either alone or with other members of your household. 3. To seek medical assistance. 4. To provide care and assistance to the vulnerable. 5. To donate blood. 6. To travel for the purposes of work or to provide voluntary or charitable services where it's not reasonably possible that work can be undertaken from home. 7. To attend a funeral. There's a separate video published to kind of find this area. 8. To fulfil a legal obligation including attending court. 9. To access critical public services including childcare or educational facilities. 10. To enable contact between children and separated parents to continue. 11. For a minister of religion or worship leader to go to the place of worship. A separate video has been published to kind of find this area. 12. To move house where necessary. And 13. To avoid injury or escape risk of harm. The prohibition on leaving the house does not apply to the homeless unless they are temporarily accommodated. It's important to note that the victims of domestic and or forms of abuse will have a reasonable excuse to leave an abusive home. This would be covered by escape, a risk of harm. In addition to the stay at home regulation, anyone going out with a reasonable excuse must further observe the restrictions on gathering regulation. No gathering of more than two people in public except where members of the same household, where the gathering is essential for work purposes, to attend a funeral, or where reasonably necessary to facilitate a house move, to provide care and assistance to a vulnerable person, 
to provide emergency assistance or to participate in legal proceedings or fulfill a legal obligation. This guidance, entitled Guidance on Access to Green Spaces, was issued on the 27th of March 2020 and sought to clarify what people could do in open spaces. And there are two notable points that are made in this guidance. One, to stay local and use open spaces near your home where possible and not to travel unnecessarily. And two, gatherings of more than two people in parks or other public spaces have been banned and the police will enforce this. It must be noted that this is guidance, not law, and the police should understand this. Even where you do have a reasonable excuse to go out and not to stay at home and be in a gathering of more than two people as per regulation six and seven, public health advice further explains that people must self-isolate and shield themselves from the public for example, those with symptoms and those who are vulnerable. And where people are in public, they should practice social distancing measures. Regulation 8 sets out the powers of the police in respect of individuals breaching the restrictions on movement, and they include direction to return to a place where they are living, removing them to their home, using reasonable force to remove them to their home, directing those responsible for a child breaching the restrictions to take them home, or ensure, as far as practicable, that the child complies. Powers to break up gatherings of three or more people is in contravention of Regulation 7 include direct to disperse, direct any person in the gathering to return home, and actually to remove them to their home. Police officer may give any reasonable instructions they consider necessary. So here's several activities you can't do as per an interpretation of the regulations. A going on a bike ride with your local club, b having a barbecue all day in a beauty spot, c going to a park where there are more than two people in the park, d playing five-a-side football, c having a cigarette in the street, f having a fun room with friends, g walking to the shops to buy a cigarette, h traveling to a place of worship and you're not a minister of religion or worship leader and you have no reason to go there, and i going to visit family. However, there is much which remains unclear and it is up to the police to interpret the concept and the idea of reasonable excuse. And there's growing number of complaints of over the top and overzealous policing, such as filming and shaming alleged stay at home rule breaches, police issuing fines without warning, defining what is and is not essential shopping and stopping people on a midnight walk. Critics have argued that the police have no power to enforce guidance only regulation which is to some extent unclear. Police officers must understand that these powers must only be exercised as a last resort and it's considered necessary and proportionate means to ensuring compliance with the stay at home laws. The College of Policing has highlighted the importance of a graduated response to breaches, to engage, to explain, to encourage and only to use enforcement measures as a last resort. Regulation 9 creates new offences, such as 1. Contravention of any of the requirements of the regulation. 2. To obstruct without reasonable excuse a person carrying out any function under the regulation. And 3. Failing to comply with a reasonable instruction or a prohibition notice for closing a premises which should be closed. If offences proceed to court, it's punishable on a summary conviction by a fine, but this amount has not been specified. Whilst most people are abiding by the letter and spirit of the regulation, those who don't must be aware that they commit an offence which they may be issued with a fixed penalty fine to the sum of £60 which is reduced to £30 if paid before the end of 14 days. If a second fixed penalty is received, this will be £120 and for a third subsequent notice, double the amount of the previous notice up to a maximum of £960. Keep up to date with the law, remember to keep up to date with the guidance as well which is changing pretty much every day. Thank you for watching, please subscribe, please comment, please stay healthy and may the justice be with you.